Six exercises for adductor strain with Dr. Noah. Adductor strain is more commonly called a groin strain, and it's common in different types of athletic activities, such as hockey or soccer or skateboard riding. Um, and it's basically a, a strain of the musculotendinous junction of one of the adductor muscles, usually the adductor valgus muscle. Um, and so the pain is usually experienced in the groin or the inner thigh. Um, and there's usually one movement or activity that's done uh, that precipitates the, the pain in, the, in this particular area. So even though um, there's a very clear uh, injury that happens in the adductor strain, the severity and duration of pain um, depends more on person's uh, mind than it does on the, the so we always take the the mind of the patient into account um, and recognize that you know even with diagnosable conditions the the person itself who it's happening to is equally as important and this is true of imaging findings too um, pretty much every much everybody over the age of 40 has some abnormalities on imaging so especially if you have this after you're 40, um, you can just assume that you're going to have some abnormalities if they do take any imaging. There's really poor correlation between the pain experience and the abnormalities on imaging. So they, they may not, they, these abnormalities may not have an effect at all. The three components of the, the groin pain are the adductor longus, the pubic symphysis, and the, the tendons and ligaments. Uh, of the adductors. So adductor longus is the primary adductor uh, muscle. Remember the adductor muscles are, are basically what make up the groin. And usually the, the uh, tendon close to the pubic symphysis is where this is damaged. And so it can pull on the pubic symphysis um, and create some pain in that area as well. And then uh, all of the other adductor in this area and the ligaments that are holding the bones together um, are a part of this uh, strain, but it's primarily the strain of the adductor longus muscle. So um, usually the history is what's used um, to diagnose this. You know, you did some activity and now you have groin pain. pain. Um, it's usually all we need to know that's a, a groin strain and to know how to treat it effectively. But to verify that, we'll do the Thomas test, the squeeze test, and the hip adduction manual muscle test to get some additional information. So phase one exercises for adductor strain are, ad are adductor stretch, seated groin stretch, and seated hamstring stretch. When doing all of these exercises, you wanna do them with awareness, with breath. You wanna feel your full body. You wanna uh, know that you're efforting and working hard up to your edge. But you also wanna be careful exercising. So with the adductor stretch, you're standing, the feet are about three feet apart. Toes are turned out from the heels. You'll bend one knee and feel a stretch through the straight leg on the opposite side, going as low as you need to get a gentle stretch. Keep the torso, up, torso upright as you do this. Next is the seated groin stretch. You're seated. You bring the soles of the feet together and the heels in close to the body and allow the knees to fall out in a butterfly position. You can gently place the elbows onto the knees and press down slightly, feeling a stretch through the groin. For the seated hamstring stretch, you're seated, extend one leg out in front of you and bend the opposite leg in, placing the inside of the foot against the inner thigh and reach over the straightened leg, leg towards the toes or the shin, feeling a stretch through the hamstring. The hamstrings and the adductors kind of work together here. It's important to stretch out the hamstrings as well. So the phase two exercises for adductor strain are isometric hip adduction, hip, hip adduction standing, and the hip bridge. So for isometric hip adduction, you may need a pillow, or a bolster or something that you can put between your knees. So you're laying on your back, uh, 
you can prop yourself up onto your elbows, your elbows, bend your knees, and place the pillow between the knees. And then press the knees into the pillow. Now you want to do long sustained holds, about 10 seconds or more. Uh, and you want to push hard, but not so hard that you're really like stressing yourself out. For the hip adduct, you're going to need some sort of band or strap. So you're going to want to stand uh, close to wherever you have that band wrapped around. Wrap it around one leg. About, and the feet are about two to three feet apart. And then you're going to bring that leg with the band on it close to the opposite leg. So you're, you're pulling with the inside of the leg uh, against the resistance of the band. You want to do this on both sides. Next is the glute bridge. You're laying on your back. You bend the knees in so the heels come close to the buttocks and the feet are on the floor. You ground through the feet and the shoulders and you lift the hips up in line with the knees. You can stay here uh, holding the stretch there or doing sets. So the number of sets and reps that you do really depends on you. You want to feel like you're doing 60 to 80% of your capacity, depending on what stage you're in in your recovery from the adductor strain. In the early stage, you want to do less, and in the later stages, you'll want to do slightly more. You want to feel like you're challenging yourself, but you don't want to do so much that you re-injure yourself. So uh, part of this is uh, creating, whether um, using heavier weights or modifying to make it easier, you want to make sure that you're keeping it novel and interesting as you go through your different stretches. And that's what I can help with. I have almost 20 years of helping people with these types of conditions. So I'd be happy to assist you in finding the a way to do these exercises that gets you the most benefit. If you come into the clinic, we'll use a, a three-step approach. Uh, first, we'll reset the pattern. So we'll break the pattern of pain, um, improving movement of, in the, the joint, the joint, reducing inflammation. Then we'll reinforce this with recommendations I'll give you to do at home, whether that's posture or sleep or stress. And then we'll do these exercises to retrain you, increase the stability continuing to, to change the exercises or modify them so that you get the best results. So hopefully these exercises are enough to give you um, some relief from the groin pain. If they're gonna work, you'll feel benefit within the first week. If you're not feeling any benefit within the first week, then you may wanna come in and get, uh, get assessed to figure out um, what level of groin strain you have or what, what specifically is going on in that area of the body. So scheduling can get you the best results. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you find these exercises useful and I look forward to working with you in the future.